everyone, Kelly here, and I'm not sure what to call this video or how to describe it really, but basically, if you've seen some of my more recent videos, you know that we decided to homeschool our kids this year. Um, my little one is just starting preschool, so she's just going to be doing some basics, um, kind of scattered throughout the year, not a specific curriculum necessarily. We're just going to work on, you know, letter sounds and numbers and stuff like that. But for my first grader, we, you know, are doing a whole curriculum and the stuff that we are going to be doing with her, I am really excited about. Like me personally, we're going to be, our main focus is like the history is kind of what is guiding our year. And the history we're going to be focusing on this year is ancient history. So we're starting with the ice age and working our way through, we're gonna end up talking about ancient China last. So it's not necessarily in chronological order, but we're kind of covering different areas of the world and ancient civilizations, and also focusing on myths from these different civilizations and things like that. And it just sounds really interesting to me. So far, my daughter's loving it. The reason I picked this one was because at the end of her kindergarten year, we did a prehistory unit where we talked about like um, the Big Bang Theory and the beginning of the world and the first plants and animals and dinosaurs and all that stuff. And she loved it so much that we did a six week program in like three weeks because she kept asking to do more and more stuff. Um, like she wanted more school in the day to cover these things. And we've already started this program with ancient history and she is loving it already, like starting about the first humans and all that stuff. So. I think she's really gonna love it and I'm really excited about it. And because I was so excited about it, I decided that I want to kind of like supplement my own learning because I just don't remember learning much about ancient civilizations when I was in school. Maybe it wasn't a focus or maybe I just don't remember. I remember not liking history in school, so I probably have just blocked a lot of it out of my mind. But now I'm really interested in, in researching this curriculum and planning for the year. I decided to buy some books or get some books in the library for my own learning. And as we are going through the different civilizations with her school, that I'm going to be supplementing my own learning with some more like older books. So, you know, adult books, some that are historical fiction, some that are nonfiction. Some of these are middle grade books because um, they're fun, like myth and, and stuff like that. And so I just wanted to share with you guys because I just think it's really fun. So I'm going to go through these in the order that we are doing them in the school year. So like I said, this is not going to be chronological in the order, you know, that these civilizations existed or whatever. We're going by region is how we're doing it in the school. So first um, off, I plan on reading Absolutely Everything by Christopher Lloyd. I had started this book back when we were learning about dinosaurs and, you know, the beginning of Earth and all that stuff. And I had read the first couple chapters, which covered that time period. But I want to continue reading the rest of this book before I start in the rest of the project, because this actually like goes into a lot of the beginning civilizations and, and it does move past what we're gonna learn about this year into like medieval times and stuff like that. But most of this book, the first like 200 out of like 300 pages is just about um, the beginning of Earth into Asian civilizations. So I just think this will be a good like basis to start the year off with. This is targeted towards middle grade children, but I think for me it'll be good as like at the beginning of the year to get like just kind of an overall view of all this stuff. So I have that in my mind before I start teaching it. And like I said earlier, we are starting off with the Ice Age, or more specifically, we're talking about the Paleolithic era and then the Neolithic era. And um, when we go through these, I'll also say, mention the books that I'm reading to her if they are chapter books. Um, a lot of these we are learning from picture books, so I don't want to share with you all the picture books we're doing, but the chapter books I will be reviewing on my channel, so I'll let you know. And we already actually read this one because we started a couple weeks ago. We read Maru of the Winter Caves by Anne Turnbull, and this is about a girl who is living through the end of the Ice Age and her family, and then kind of, like, kind of following them as they you know, go from the caves to like following the herds throughout the summer months to, you know, get food and then returning back to the cave. So it's like one year of her life. And my daughter absolutely loved this book. We devoured it in like three days. So that one was a really good one. And then for me, I picked up the adult book, The Clan of the Cave Bear by Jean M. Ayle. And um, this is a whole series, but I'm just going to start off with the first book and see if I even like it. And this also follows a family um, during the Ice Age. And 
I don't really know anything else about it but when I was looking up books around this time period this was the one that like was the most popular and so I wanted to give this one a try and hopefully start it soon while we're still in the couple weeks that we are learning about this time period. And then next we're gonna be learning about Mesopotamia. And for that, our read aloud is called The Golden Bull by Marjorie Cowley. And I think this follows a brother and sister living in the farmlands of Mesopotamia. I don't know anything other than that, but this will be the chapter book that I read with my daughter. I've heard good things about this because this is, this is involved in several different curriculums that I had found. And so I think this is a popular one. Maybe it's because it's the only like children's chapter book about this time period but I've heard good things about this one. And then I personally want to also read City of the Plague God by Sarwat Chadha. And this is part of the Rick Riordan Presents line. And I've just really enjoyed all of the books that I've read from that book line. And this one, I don't know much about it other than it involves Mesopotamian mythology. And like I said, I just enjoyed everything in the Rick Riordan Presents imprint. And so I just knew that, that this took place during that time period or had the mythology of that time period. So I knew I wanted to read it in association with this. And then next we're going to be spending quite a few weeks on Egypt. And so we're actually doing two read alouds. So the first one I'm doing with her is called Egyptian Diary by Richard Platt. And this is basically just um, written as like a diary from a boy who is apprenticing to be uh, a scribe or or studying to be a scribe and just kind of his day-to-day -day life in ancient Egypt. So that's our first read aloud. And the second one is taking place in modern time but involves the ancient Egypt in it. It's called Theodosia and the Serpents of Chaos by R.L. Lefevers. And in case that name sounds familiar, she's also the woman that wrote like the young adult novels like Grave Mercy, that whole series. And I think R.L it is I don't remember what her first name is but when she writes under RL she's writing for children I didn't realize they were the same person until I looked her up but this is about a girl who her father works at a museum and then somebody brings like when an archaeologist brings in this item from ancient Egypt and it turns out that it you know has all these things that bad things that start happening and so she needs to get this artifact back where it belongs or something like that so it's taking place in modern England but involves ancient Egypt in it and then and what I want to read is The Red Pyramid by Rick Riordan and this is in his series what is it, the King Chronicles. I have never read this series from Rick Riordan and it's I think it's a it's either three or four books in this series so if I like this first one maybe I'll just read all the books um, and I don't really know anything about this but I wanted to read more Rick Riordan. I thought this will fit perfectly um, because it involves a boy whose father is an Egyptologist so I'm assuming like all of his books it's going to involve mythology or stuff that is happening from that time period but taking place in modern day so i think it's taking place in modern day from from what i said but it, it'll involve the gods of ancient egypt and things like that so i'm excited to try that series if you've read that one let me know if it's any good and then i'm also going to read a nonfiction book i want to read the woman who would be king by kara cooney and this is about um i can't remember how to say her name but she was a pharaoh in ancient Egypt, the Hatshepsut. I should have looked up how to say her name. I will before I actually teach about her to my daughter. And this is just about a woman who became, I think she became Egypt's second female pharaoh. And so I thought that would be a good one. I've heard good things about this from a couple people on booktube. So I thought it'd be nice to read at least one nonfiction about that time period. And then the next civilization or set of civilizations that we are going to be learning about is Mesoamerican. And we are just doing this through picture books with my daughter. But for me, I was thinking, I had two different books that I was thinking of picking up. This one was a hard one for me to find. I have already read Gods of Jade and Shadow by Silvia Moreno Garcia. And so that was one I knew was about Mayan mythology. Um, but then I found two others around the Americas that um, sounded interesting. One is called The Days of the Deer by Liliana Bodoc, and this is an epic fantasy that is taking inspiration from the native cultures of the Americas. And this author is actually Argentinian, and this is the only one in the trilogy that has been translated to English. So I might regret my decision of picking this one up because I don't know if it ends on a cliffhanger and since it's the only one that's translated. But the reviews are really good for this one, and I just thought it would be good to read a piece of translated fiction. And and so 
I'll at least read the first one in that trilogy. And then the other book that I've heard people talking about lately is Black Sun by Rebecca Rowanhorse. And this one is inspired by the civilizations of the pre-Columbian Americas. So I think it'll probably fit into that um, Mesoamerican civilizations. We'll see. But if not, I think it'll be good to um, read that one too, because I've heard a lot of really good things about it. So those are the two I'm reading for that area. And those are all happening in the first semester. So then we take, you know, Christmas break and all that stuff. And then we start on Greece and we actually study Greece for six weeks, I think, maybe even more, maybe seven weeks. So I have a lot of books for Greece because we're going to be looking at it for almost two months. And I might start these over Christmas too, to kind of like get my myself in the mood for Greece. And the book that I'll be reading to my daughter is called Tales from the Odyssey by Mary Pope Osborne. And this is the same woman that that wrote the Magic Treehouse books, if you have kids and ever heard of those. And so the, it's really, she does really simple writing and she writes about historical things and in this case, mythology. And so I'll, I'll, I'm interested to read this to my daughter and hope she likes the stories. I've heard good things about this one as a read aloud. But then for me, I have like a huge list because there are so many, you know, retellings of Greek myths and things like that. So First of all, because we're reading that Tales from the Odyssey, I wanted to read another version of the Odyssey, but I don't want to actually read the Odyssey from Homer. I just don't think that I am ready for that at this moment. So instead, I picked up this book, The Odyssey, which is illustrated by Manuela Adriani, and she has retold the epic poem in here. And this is actually targeted towards children, um, but I think it's going to be at a higher level than the Tales from the Odyssey, um, and it is got huge illustrations and things like that. I've heard that this was a really good retelling. And so I just wanted to have another version of a retelling without actually reading Homer's Odyssey. I just, I'm just not in the mood to do that this year. And then of course, I'm going to be reading some adaptations and things like that. So the books I did buy was I bought the Penelopead by Margaret Atwood. And this is following Penelope, who is Odysseus's wife. So that'll be an interesting perspective. I like it when people write books that were like originally from the viewpoint of the men, you know, they're all from the viewpoint of the men and switch it to the women's viewpoint. So I have that one. And then I have the Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller, which I'm sure everybody's heard of because it was everywhere and I just never read it. And so this one is based off of the Iliad. And so I will be checking that one out because I think that's the only one based on the Iliad that I have. And then I also have Lovely War by Julie Berry. And this isn't like a retelling or anything, but I think this story is told by Aphrodite and a couple of the other gods. And one of the things my daughter and I are going to be doing other than reading the Odyssey is we're also going to be reading about gods and goddesses from ancient Greece. And so I thought this would be a good one to throw in there because of that. And then I have a bunch of books that I might get from the library because there were so many that I wanted, but I just didn't want to spend too much money. So I only bought a few. So I also might check out Ariadne by Jennifer Saint. And this is um, a retelling of Theseus and the Minotaur. And this is another one I think that is from the female perspective of the story. And then of course, Circe by Madeline Miller, which is, is from the Odyssey, a character from the Odyssey. And once again, another one that everybody has been talking about on book two, and I just haven't picked up. This is the perfect time to do it as I'm immersed in ancient Greece. And then I also might pick up Till We Have Faces by C.S. Lewis, which is a retelling of Cupid and Psyche. And then also Bull by David Elliott, which is a retelling of the story of the Minotaur. But I think this is written in verse, like it's a young adult novel written in verse. So that'll be an interesting kind of difference from the others. And then there's also Trials of Apollo by Rick Riordan. There's that series. Um, I had read Percy Jackson and the Heroes of Olympus already. So I thought this would be another one in that like pantheon of gods that I could try out. And then there's also Amber and Clay by Laura Amy Schlitz. And this is also written in verse. This is a young adult novel written in verse and it just takes place in ancient Greece. I don't think it's based off of a specific myth or anything like that. I think it's just based off of the time period. And I've heard good reviews about it so far. It's a new novel that came out in 2021. And then I have two nonfiction options. The first one is called The Naked Olympics by Tony Perotet. And this is specifically about the Olympics and the origins and what it was like during the like original Greek Olympics. And I know that it is much different than how the Olympics are now. And for one thing that they competed naked. And so I just thought that would be an interesting to learn a little bit more, especially right now um, we are going through the Olympics. I mean, when I'm filming this, the Olympics finished a couple weeks ago, but I'm still watching it because I had 
my streaming service for a whole month. So I'm still involved in the Olympics. So I just thought, hey, maybe I should learn about the origins of the Olympics. And then the other nonfiction is Antigone Rising by Helen Morales. And this one is a nonfiction analysis of the Greek and Roman myths. And I just thought this would be a good way to kind of round out this study before I get into, um, cause we'll be doing Rome a few weeks after that. So I thought this would be a good bridge between when we learn about ancient Greece and when we learn about ancient Rome and talking about the different myths and kind of analyzing them with a modern take on the myths. So then after Greece, we're going to be studying India and ancient India. And so the read aloud that I'm going to be doing with my daughter is Aro Shah and the End of Time by Roshni Chotsky. And this is another one that's from the Rick Riordan Presents line. And I'm really excited about this one. This is a bigger series. I think it has like four or five books in it. And this is about a girl who she spends a lot of time in the Museum of Ancient India and she accidentally releases an ancient demon and following her adventures. And for me, I'm really unfamiliar with a lot of the mythology or um, anything about ancient India. So I decided to pick up two retellings about some of the main ancient epics. And so the first one is the Ramayana, which was is a retelling by Linda Agenis. I don't know if I pronounced her name right. And Kumuda Reddy. And this is just a retelling of that ancient epic. Uh, I also have a picture book of the Ramayana that I also want to read. I want to read it first before I read it to my daughter because looking at the pictures, it seemed like the, the pictures were kind of graphic. So I just wanted to check it out. So I'll have two versions of the Ramayana that I'm going to be reading. One that's targeted as children and one for adults. And then I have The Palace of Illusions by Chitra Banerjee Deva Kamaruni. And I did look up how to say her name, so I still probably said it wrong. But anyways, this is a um, reimagining of the Indian epic, the Mahabharat. And so I figured this would be a good introduction to um, ancient India for me as an adult. And then next we move into Rome and the Roman Empire. And so the book that I'll be reading with my daughter is called Roman Diary by Richard Platt. And this is like the Egyptian diary. This is a diary of a girl during this time period. I believe she has been sold as a slave to the Roman Empire. Like I think she's coming from Greece and was traveling and was captured and becomes a slave. And so kind of her view of the Roman Empire as a slave. Um, so that's the one I'm reading with my daughter. And then just like ancient Greece, I had quite a few books about ancient Rome. And the first one I have is Lavinia by Ursula K. Le Guin. I believe this is a retelling of the Aeneid by Virgil, but from Lavinia's point of view, I don't know if she is his wife of the main character from that story. I don't know. I've never read their, that story and don't really know much about it, but this is the one that popped up when I looked at Ancient Rome. And I also want to say, I just bought this book used and it was like in great condition, except for they had this huge sticker here. And when I took off the sticker, it took off the front of the cover. And so I ended up putting my own stickers in place basically just so I didn't have a giant hole in the front of my book. But I'm just saying that makes me mad is that like, other than that, this was in very good condition, but this is the size of the sticker that was in the front. So they have one on the back and they had a sticker that size on the front. So I know this is not a book haul, but I'm just a little grumpy. So I had to kind of like do something to fix the front of my book. And then I thought this was a great excuse for buying more of my favorite edition of Shakespeare. So I just really love these Pelican Shakespeare editions. And I thought, while we're talking about Rome, I might as well pick these up. So I picked up Julius Caesar and um, Antony and Cleopatra. We're doing a week specifically just about Antony and Cleopatra. So these will be perfect for when we're studying Rome. And I just really love these covers and they're beautiful. Like I said, this shouldn't be a book call, but that's why I got those and want to read them at this time. And while we're talking about Cleopatra, I ended up getting Cleopatra Life by Stacey Schiff. And I have seen two of the people that I follow really regularly have read this in the last year and really enjoyed it. And this is just a biography of Cleopatra. So this will be my nonfiction for when I am reading about Rome. And then the last one for Rome, I have Pompeii by Robert Harris. And this is just a historical fiction book about Pompeii right before the disaster happened. I don't really know how he's going to talk about that specifically, or he's going to focus more on day-to-day -day life before the disaster, before the eruption. Um, but yeah, we're spending an entire week talking about Pompeii. So I figured I might as well read this. This is pretty short. So I figured I can read this during that week when we're, we're when we are learning about the eruption of Mount 
Vesuvius and Pompeii. And then next we are learning about ancient Africa and specifically because we learned about ancient Egypt already, we're learning about Western Africa civilizations. Um, and with my daughter, we'll just be doing that through picture books. But for me, I thought I would pick up Tristan Strong Punches a Hole in the Sky by Kwame Mbali. And this is another one, the Rick Riordan Presents imprint. As you can tell, I'm going to be reading a lot of things from that imprint and also from Rick Riordan because I just really enjoy all the books that I've read either from him or from the imprint and so they're really great to go along with mythology and the fact that they're middle grade books makes it so I can read more of them. And this one I think focuses both on Western African mythology like with Anansi and things like that but then it also talks about Black American gods as well so it's mixing the two and so I think that'll be a really interesting series to start. And the other book I want to read while we're studying Africa is A Song of Race and Ruin by Roseanne A. Brown and I don't really remember much about the plot of this one but I've seen it around book two for the last year and when I looked it up it said it was inspired by North African and West African folklore so I figured it would fit in. And then the last area that we are going to be studying is ancient China. And the book I'm going to be reading with my daughter is Where the Mountain Meets the Moon by Grace Lin. And yes, this will be the third time I have read this book. Um, and I was thinking maybe I would just read to her another Grace Lin book so I didn't have to read this for the third time. But the like curriculum I bought has a lot of like activities and discussion questions from this book. So I'm just going to read it for the third time because I loved the story. And by the time we get around to this at the end of the school year, it will have been a year before I read it the last time, so it'll be fine. And I think she'll really enjoy this story. So this is the one we're going to be reading together. And then I thought for myself that I might as well read another book by Grace Lynn, When the Sea Turned to Silver, because I haven't read this one, read this one yet. And she always puts in stories from Chinese mythology into her main plot points. So this will be an interesting way to learn more about the like ancient Chinese mythology. And then this last one is not actually ancient Chinese mythology. This is the Magnolia Sword, A Ballad of Mulan by Sherry Thomas. And the um, Mulan storyline came out more around like, I think the like fourth century. So that wouldn't count necessarily as ancient China. But I think it's close enough that I wanted to read this book. So I'm counting it. Um, and because we will be at the end of learning about the ancients at that point. So might as well use it as a bridge into um, later times. So this will be the last one I read for history. And so those are all the books involving the history subjects that my daughter is going to be learning about. And then there was just a few other things that we're going to be doing during the year that are mostly like science or art based that are like unit studies that we're going to be talking about. And I found some books that I thought were interesting that I wanted to read involving those unit studies. One is that we are not necessarily a unit study, but towards the beginning of this year, because we are talking about prehistory at the end of last year and then moving into early humans, we started talking a little bit about um, evolution and Charles Darwin. So I am reading to my daughter right now this book called One Beetle Too Many by Catherine Lasky. And this is a chapter book about Darwin. My daughter is actually really enjoying this. I wasn't sure if she would find this interesting or not because it's just basically a biography of Charles, Charles Darwin but she keeps asking me to read more and more chapters and so we're actually gonna probably finish this in two sittings so she's really enjoying learning about evolution and we've also read like some picture books and done some activities about evolution but then I wanted to read some more about Darwin so I picked up a book called Darwin His Daughter and Human Evolution by Randall Kins and this is kind of like part biography so it's not necessarily focusing just on his like theory of evolution but like also just about his family life and things like that and it just sounded like an interesting way to do it instead of just reading more of a scientific text for myself and then for art my daughter and I are like basically every week in the first semester we are learning about a different artist and kind of reading picture books about that artist and then doing art crafts you know based off of their style of art and the first person that we learned about was Leonardo da Vinci and I have had this book on my shelf for like four years and I thought this is the perfect time to read it because we are delving into um, art appreciation I might as well finally pick this book up so I actually already started this one this is by Walter Isaacson this is like a huge biography of Leonardo da Vinci um, so I'm just, I'm not going to be 
finishing this right away. I'm just gonna pick away at this one over the next few months. But I read the like introduction and was really enjoying the style of writing. So I think I'll get into this. This is the heaviest book though that I have ever held because they have it on paper that is like conducive to doing all the like pictures and things like that. But every single page is that picture paper. So this is like holding up a brick. Then also for science, we're going to be focusing on the oceans for about three months. And so I picked up The Soul of an Octopus by Cy Montgomery, and I'd heard a lot of good things about this. This is a, about a scientist who studies octopuses and just kind of um, finding out that they are really intelligent creatures and things like that. And I also think this is kind of like brings in a lot of philosophy as well, like about, you know, the human soul and all that stuff connected with the octopus study. I don't know. I've heard a couple people read this one and that it was really good and it's not that long. So I figured when we study oceans that I would pick that one up for myself. And with my daughter, we're actually watching a documentary that um, is based off of Cy Montgomery and his studying of octopuses. So that'll be fun to read this alongside doing that documentary with my daughter. And then in the second semester for science, we are going to do a big unit about um, the human body. So I picked up this book, Body Talk, 37 Voices that Explore Our Radical Anatomy, edited by Kelly Jensen. I had heard um, Books and Lala talking about this, Kayla from Books and Lala talking about this book. There's like several books in this series that involve different kind of collection of essays and things like that. And she always rates them really highly. And so I thought this would be a good one to read while I'm studying the human body, read, read about different essays from different people. Um, it says it, it talks about size and shape, scoliosis, eating disorders, cancer, sexuality, all that kind of stuff. So I think that'll be an interesting one for me to read while we're studying that. And then there was one other that I almost forgot. And that is we're going to be studying birds of prey for several weeks. That was my daughter's choice. She just absolutely loves birds and she really wanted to she specifically wanted to learn about vultures is what she told me and I decided that we were going to extend it into a whole unit about birds of prey but but since she was so excited about re learning about vultures I decided I would pick up this nonfiction book that's called Vulture the Private Life of an Unloved Bird I can't remember the author so I'll put the picture here I'm getting it from the library in a couple days um, and this is just all about vultures and how they're important in our you know ecosystem and all that stuff and how they get a bad rap like everybody kind of hates vultures and thinks they're gross and stuff like that but they serve such an important purpose so um, I thought this would be an interesting one for me to read so that I can pass on more knowledge to my daughter about vultures and then we can appreciate them together I just think it's really interesting that when I asked my daughter what she wanted to learn in science um, I gave her some different options you know I told her that we were probably going to study oceans and marine uh, you know biology and then also like the human body and I said what do you want to learn about and the first thing that pops out of her mouth was vultures and buzzards that's what she wanted to learn about and so I'm like hey you know, if this is what she's interested in, I really want to learn more about it. Um, so that's it. I know this is probably going to be a very long video because I have tons of book books, but this is going to be like things that I'm going to read throughout the entire school year. And, you know, maybe I won't get to all of them when we are studying each thing. So this might extend after the school year, but I'm just really excited about this year teaching my daughter, learning about ancient civilizations, learning about the different science topics that we are going to be covering. Yeah, we're just going to be doing a lot of really fun things. I think first grade is going to be a lot of fun. And that's it for me. Um, if you know of any other books that involve, you know, ancient civilizations or ancient myths from any of these areas, let me know. There's some of them I just don't have a lot of like things that I have found that sound interesting. So if you know of any, give me recommendations down below. And that's it for me. I'll see you next time. Bye.